it's just gone four o'clock so I just wanted to say hello everyone welcome to those who are just joining us now um, I'm Bron from Teach Starter and also the host of the podcast for the love of teaching this evening we're going to be talking about um, tips for casual teachers so we've named the the event welcome relief and we hope that we are able to give you some help um, with all, all sorts of aspects of casual teaching so I personally had the pleasure and privilege of being a relief teacher um, within my career and absolutely loved it so it's my hope for those of you who are here this evening to gain something um, from our webinar and also to wish you all the best in your um, year this year as a CRT or as a future CRT. Oh, also just for disambiguation purposes, everywhere here um, in Australia and abroad, we have different names, but we're talking about casual relief teaching when we say CRT, but also relief teachers are known as supply, um, relief casual, uh, substitutes in some places. Um, there's so many different names for them, but that we're all talking about the same thing. Um, now this evening, our guest is Minami Uchida, who is an experienced casual relief teacher. She's been in her role for over five years. And then a little later on, after Minami has a chat with us, I'm going to be sharing a video that I recorded previously here at Teach Starter, just talking through some quick hints and tips and helpful resources that we have that can support um, casual relief teachers in their practice. So if you're interested in any of the resources that we chat about, I did say this just before we started the live, but you're most welcome to ask in the chat box or you can go to teachstarter.com and visit our plans page, which is just at teachstarter.com forward slash plans. Um, and we will have a link there for you in the comments as well, if you would like to visit there. And we're joined, speaking of our links, <laughs> we're joined tonight by uh, Teach Starters Community and Events Coordinator, Mel, who's online waiting to answer your questions. And Trish as well is um, there with some, lots of answers for you too. Don't worry about your mics and cameras that are already switched off. And don't forget to ask us your Q&A questions throughout. Um, just a quick reminder that while our webinars are not presented as professional development as such, you may be able to claim them towards your CPD hours. So just check the requirements of your state's teacher registration or ask your PD manager if the webinar, if the webinar qualifies. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, and also, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we now stand and pay my respect to elders both past and present and future. Um, and now heading into the content of tonight's uh, webinar, it's with great pleasure that I'm about to introduce you to our guest Minami Uchida. Just a quick little bio on Minami. She's been a casual relief teacher um, for over five years, but she's also a PhD candidate She's just submitted <laughs> her PhD, so amazing. Congratulations to you, Minami, at Macquarie Uni. And she's been studying the perspectives and challenges of relief teachers for three years. So she's going to share the evidence and research that she's done and share some reasons why people choose to enter relief teaching roles, how, um, how many relief teachers find uh, fulfillment professionally as casual teachers and also tell us a little bit more about her research also maybe give us some hints and tips on what admins are looking for in employing casual relief teachers so <laughs> welcome Minami and thank you so much for being here with us thank you so much um, for your wonderful introduction Bron that's really kind of you um, and thank you everyone for attending this webinar or if you're watching this after the live stream thank you so much for tuning in Amazing. Um, Such yeah. a big achievement from you. So we're going to hand over to you now. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Well, as Bron did say, I am a casual teacher and have been for, yeah, about five or going into six years now. And um, I also did my PhD thesis on experiences of casual relief teachers in Australian primary schools. Um, and to give you a bit of a background, I didn't necessarily choose to become a casual teacher. So back in 2014, I graduated from my bachelor's of education in primary teaching. And like a lot of new graduates, I didn't just walk into a full-time role or a contract. Um, 
So I just decided that for the sake of experience and getting my foot into the door that I'll try casual teaching. Um, now, I don't know about other universities, but um, my personal experience was that there wasn't really any explicit instructions out there um, in terms of how to go about the process of becoming a casual teacher. Um, you know, like, do I email my resume? Do I rock up to a school and try and meet them in person? Or what training do I need to complete? What resources should I take? And I had to navigate these questions pretty much on my own. And what really inspired me to start my PhD is to try and alleviate that sense of loneliness and alienation that can arise out of being a casual teacher. So the thing that really helped me was an online community of support. I mostly used Facebook groups as a source of my peer support. And so if you haven't done so already, I would really encourage you to join these Facebook groups. Um, and seek out that sort of virtual staff room if possible. And back when I started, I don't think I had, I don't think Teach Starter existed, I'm not sure, but um, I know for a fact that if it did, I would have signed up straight away and downloaded all the resources they had available to make my life easier and stress-free. Um, I guess I just wanted to start off by describing my first day as a casual teacher. Is that okay, Bron? Oh. Of course, yes, please. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so I dropped off my resume to around 10 schools and just waited. <laughs> and I'm not a very patient person and I'm also quite an anxious person. So waiting around for that phone call to ring uh, was just very quite difficult for me. But then I got a phone call around 6.30 a.m. and I was asked to take a year six class at a completely new school that I've never been to before. I was full of adrenaline. I got dressed and I rushed out the door and the day itself was just like a complete blur. Like I don't really remember much about it. Um, and it was a straightforward day. The class I had was respectful and everything was very much structured, but my goodness, I was nervous, like shaking <laughs> in the morning before the kids arrived nervous. Um, and maybe some of you in this webinar had already had your first day as a casual teacher. And I hope you went well, and I hope that you were in a but much better state of mind than I was on my first day. Um, and my advice for you, um, new casual teachers, would be to be really kind to yourself on your first day on the job and every subsequent day of casual teaching. Just be kind to yourself and self-compassionate. <laughs> um, because as long as you're doing your best professional job to make the students stay smooth, then I think you're doing a really, really great job. So to kind of segue um, into that, I wanted to just chat about the obstacles um, with casual teaching because it can be quite a challenging experience. Um, and to be honest, the very first obstacle might be that you might need to wait until you get your very first day as a casual teacher. Um, typically around this time of the year in term one, it can be um, a little bit quiet and schools may not need casual teachers until sometime maybe towards the end of term one. So my advice would be to just kind of keep persisting and uh, keep following up with schools to add you to their casual list and maybe make yourself known to a few new schools through emailing or you know face-to-face -face contact, um, just depending on the situation with COVID. Um, the second obstacle that I found really prominent in my PhD was a lot of casual teachers found it difficult in a sense that casual teaching is intrinsically unpredictable. There is a lot of unpredictability um, in the fact that you might not get control over what grade you teach, what type of work is left behind by the teacher, if any <laughs> work is left behind, um, how many students you were, you know, how many students will respond to you in a positive way or they may react in a not so positive way, um, how friendly the other staff are. So, all that sort of stuff is beyond your control. You might also have a casual day where you were told to um, you know, teach year one, but then you rock up to the school and you get told that you'll be having year six. Or you may have half a day of year one and then half a day of year six, and you have to really mentally switch <laughs> um, accordingly and be flexible during that day. And some people really thrive on that unpredictability and change, and I am not one of these people. <laughs> I really would much rather structure, but. The best way that I found to combat anxiety around that was just to be really organized. 
um, I can control some things, but I try my best to control everything that I can control. Um, so to me, that looks like packing all my resources, like worksheets and stickers and pencil cases, um, within a dedicated casual teacher bag so that it's ready to go on the day. Um, I organize my wardrobe with like professional outfits that I could wear for a casual day if it came up like completely unexpectedly. Um, yeah, these little things give me a piece of um, mind. And the final challenge that I want to touch on was that of uh, classroom management. And I think a lot of people even experienced full-time teachers would relate to that. Um, and I want to stress that even after six years of casual teaching, it's, um, it's something that I'm still learning. Um, in my PhD, behavior management was very much a recurring theme at the center of teachers' concerns. So if that's your concern too, then I want to um, stress that you're not alone. Um, if you're very new to casual teaching, in terms of behavior management, I suggest that you sit down at some point and type out or write some sort of a script about what you want to say and what kind of boundary you want to have with the students. Maybe three rules that you can come up together with the class or just your non-negotiables just to set the tone. Okay, I want to move on also to what makes casual teaching super fulfilling because there are some rewarding aspects of casual teaching. Um, and I was really pleasantly surprised in my research about how many teachers actively chose casual teaching over full-time work. Um, so uh, I guess one thing to, to um, emphasize is that a lot of casual teachers saw themselves as gardeners. Um, I love metaphors and quite a few said that they are a gardener and the students are the plants. And as a gardener, you're there to kind of sprinkle a little bit of water or, you know, let them shift their soil so that it's, you know, in the sunlight. You're there to ensure a continuity of growth. And that is something that is important and is valuable. So um, some days you might not feel like a gardener. Some days you might feel like a cat herder or a juggler or an octopus with eight legs and arms, like trying to get everything together. But at the end of the day, you know, you are doing the best you can to make sure that students are feeling valued and that, you know, they're still growing despite their classroom teacher's absence. Um, in a more practical sense, casual teaching offers you flexibility. If you need a day off, you can take a day off. It offers you variety. Um, you know, you can teach at multiple settings and year groups. And you can also observe, um, you know, a lot of what other teachers are doing in terms of how they set up their seating plan or behavior management plan or what worksheets and resources they use. And all of these information that can be a part of your teaching toolkit as you progress in your career. Um, okay, so I also wanted to discuss um, what executive staff look for in casual teachers. Um, so I interviewed as part of my research principals, deputy principals and head teachers from both primary and secondary schools. And they hands down emphasize that casual teachers need flexibility. So what they're really looking for are those teachers who are happy to go with any changes made to their school day. Um, they, are, they love teachers that can adapt with different disruptions during the day. And they really appreciate teachers that understand that schools are very dynamic places with lots of unexpected things that can happen. And honestly, they do just want casual teachers who are professional punctual and organized. They appreciate teachers who come on time for playground duty, you know, teachers who have a few lesson ideas up their sleeve um, and, you know, leave a note for the end of the day for the classroom teacher. The last thing I wanted to mention regarding executive staff is that I asked them to represent casual teachers as a metaphor. Again, I'm really into metaphors and it kind of gives you a holistic understanding of how they perceive us as professionals. And it was quite revealing in terms of how much they really did value casual teachers. Some said that casual teachers were like lifesavers and emergency paramedics because, you know, their schools would not function otherwise. Another said that we were kaleidoscopes because we can shine new light in different areas of the school community that have maybe been neglected for a while. Another said that casual teachers are flowers in a garden bed. And each flower is different, but they all add value to the school community in different ways. So my overall message is that executive staff, the good ones anyway, 
think really highly of casual teachers. They understand that, you know, we have our own strengths and weaknesses and skills and backgrounds that we can bring to the table. And they know that casual teaching can be challenging and they appreciate us turning up anyway, day after day. Um, so I think those metaphors can be a guide as to how you might want to approach the school day. I know that when I'm feeling a bit anxious about the casual day, I say to myself, well, I'm here as a lifesaver, <laughs> you know, I'm going to do a really good job. I'm doing something that's really important, contributing to the school community in the best way that I can. And that really um, helps my mindset for the day. So just to kind of quickly um, sum up, my advice is to find a community or network of people to encourage you. Um, be wary of perfectionism. Just remember that you are trying your best. And despite bad days, um, as long as you, you know, turn up, and you know are here for the ride it's all just part of the casual teaching experience and also reach out for help if you need it to executive staff or to other staff or members both in person and online so that was a very quick nutshell of yeah my advice and sort of a few findings from my research wonderful thank you so much minami for sharing i really appreciate you using those beautiful metaphors to explain to us and the kaleidoscope one it was absolutely my favorite um it's really so important to highlight the you know just the value of casual relief teachers in our communities and i think the lifesaver one really speaks to that as well so thank <laughs> yeah. you for sharing that and also just the positivity that you have towards your job as also so um thank you again really appreciate that i can see we've got some questions coming up there and we will definitely get to those um but i just wanted to mention now also if you are um, interested in learning a little bit about a, a little bit more about casual relief teaching we have two podcast episodes a number of blogs and heaps of resources on the website teachstarter.com you're welcome to go and take a look there and you might find um some information that is relevant to you as well um, but in the meantime, we're on to the next part of the evening. And as I mentioned before, I used to be a casual relief teacher and loved it, just like you do, Minyami, despite the challenges. Um, so now we're going to share a little 10 minute video that I filmed previously, and it's got some tips and resources for preparing for your relief days. And I noticed there is a question there about just in case what happens if the teacher doesn't leave you any work. And I do talk about that a little bit in the video. So we're going to head over to that now. Hello, relief teachers. I was a relief teacher for some time. I was a teacher for over 10 years, but a good portion of that I was relief teaching in schools around Brisbane and remember that time very fondly. And I really enjoyed the flexibility that that um, role afforded me. I've written a little bit about it on the chalkboard blog at Teach Starter, and there's lots of resources that I really enjoyed using when I was relief teaching that really made my job a lot easier. It is a challenging job and we have curriculum aligned resources here that can help you throughout your day. Because one of the things about relief teaching that I'm sure you already know is that unexpected things will crop up. Sometimes they'll be planning, sometimes they won't. Some days you'll arrive at a school and you'll be on the exact same class that you were called to go on to. And then other days you're going to get switched around. <laughs> um, so you might be teaching PE when you thought you were on grade six, or you might be teaching prep when you thought you were on grade two. And one of our really important key roles as a relief teacher is to be calm and to be flexible and to be there for those students because they're going through the exact same kind of thing as us. It's a different day for them. So I thought I would start by showing you through some of the things that Teach Starter offers that even before I worked at Teach Starter, I used in the classrooms I was visiting. My favourite thing that we have at Teach Starter is the full day relief teaching plans. And they there are so many of these. They come from prep to grade six or kindergarten to grade six. And there are six versions in each year level. I would recommend loading those onto your USB and then taking them either with you in a printed folder like this one or in a digital form on that USB to print when you get to the school. 
I am a person who likes things in paper-based form. So I printed off one in each year level. Usually if I got a call for grade two, I would also pack in my teaching bag, the grade one version and the grade three version, just in case the students had already seen the similar type of work or if they were um, performing or learning above or a little bit below the typical year level. So I'm gonna take you through the plan now and show you a little example of what's in there because these are so helpful for relief teachers, particularly if the regular teacher has not left any work, if they've had to leave on short notice or through illness or injury and not for something planned like PD or um, planned leave, they may not have had a chance to leave you any work. So it's really good to have some curriculum aligned, level appropriate work ready for you to go. So on the first page of your full day relief really teaching plan, you'll have the layout of an entire day. Now you could actually rearrange this and I used to do that a lot, particularly if there were things left by the teacher that were unfinished, that he or she might have needed finishing off, I would prefer to get that done first or if there were routines that needed to be um, kept with such as if it was a Friday and it was test day or if it was a Monday and it was an uh, establishing routines day, I would stick with what would be the norm. You can just chat to your neighbouring teacher about about what's going to be happening that day. Um, but if there's absolutely nothing, it does provide you the full day plan broken down into admin, morning session, middle session and afternoon session. And it kind of works as a literacy block and a numeracy block then with some KLAs in the afternoon there. So for the grade two one, it's got the arts drama as the KLA visited in the afternoon. Um, you can add your own notes on this side and then there's some assessment strategies as well there for you to tick off if you would like to leave some assessment and reporting for the teacher. So um, as it says in the front, the first part of the day, so from the beginning of the day, to um, first break is literacy blocks. So there's a comprehension um, activity there and some questions. Now you might choose to project that onto the board if you like, and then just give each student a worksheet to complete. And then it's got the answers there too. And then there's actually another activity there, a writing task that you can do with your class. It doesn't require any actual resources to be printed off. They can do that one in their books. And then the next part um, between first break and second break is all about maths. So this one has some skip counting activities. It has some posters showing skip counting strategy. And then it has the blank sheets at the back. And again, differentiating to the class's needs, you might choose to do skip counting by four if the students are up to that. Or for some students, you might choose to give them a different um, sheet that might be more tailored to their abilities. And then after that, there's a bit of a problem solving investigation called Pandora's Party Palace, which is super fun. And your kids are always gonna remember you if you teach this lesson in, your, in their class. So Pandora's Party Palace is a catalog to plan a class party. And it also comes with all of these little problem solving cards. So they're word-based problem solving questions. And that is something that all teachers will love you if you do in their classroom, because problem solving is hard. Now you might also choose to have a cubes strategy poster of ours projected on the board just to help them through the steps of problem solving as well. But students really love this kind of thing. So that's a great activity to do to fill in that maths block as well. Another really beautiful part of this um, folder system is the relief teaching day feedback form that's included in the back of every single daily plan. Now, I used to love this, both as a classroom teacher, having relief teachers coming in for me, and also as a relief teacher visiting lots of different schools. I had a lot of feedback from schools saying, where did you get that? I really love the way you set that out. And it was just from TeachStarter. And it was probably one of my favorite teacher facing resources from TeachStarter because it's got the information, it's got your name. I would also include my phone number. And then it just has broken down into the parts of the day the activities that you did get through, you can leave a few notes for the teacher there or some more detailed notes stapled on. And then some behavior management notes. If you have had any um, behavior management things crop up during the day, really good to inform the teacher in as much detail as possible and additional comments down there at the bottom. So that's taking you through as an example of the full day plan relief teaching folder. As I said, we have them in every year level from foundation K or prep all the way through to grade six. So here are some other examples that we have on the website done up into booklets. And to support those, I also had some other favorite teach starter resources in my teaching bag. And I'm just gonna quickly go through those with you now. 
At the beginning of any relief teaching day, we all know it can be chaotic because opening the door to a whole class of new faces and showing them your new face that they might not be familiar with um, can open up a whole heap of different um, emotions and feelings and behaviours. So I found it really helpful to establish some behaviour management ground rules as soon as I stepped into the classroom. So I would first do the roll call and then straight on to behaviour management. Now, if there was already a school-based or year-level based behaviour management system in plan, I would just go with that and that was really easy to do. But if there wasn't something that was clearly visible or something that the students were really connected to, I would take the um, daily behaviour tracker from Teach Starter with me. And this could just go into the back of one of those folders. So what, would, what I would do with this one is place it somewhere visible, explain to the children how, how it works, and then place a petal for every positive behaviour noticed onto the flower. And then when the flower is complete, at the end of the day, the class receives a reward, which could be anything from a ball game. So I would always take some things with me, like balls or um, a card game. I would take a deck of cards every day with me as well. Um, or just maybe an outside game or the drama activity, something like that, that you could reward them with at the end of the day. So that's a whole class reward system that works really well, especially on days where you're in supply or casual teaching, because you might not know everybody's name at the beginning of the day you don't need to, you can just spot the positive behaviour and really get that happening and reward it early on to set the example of your expectations. So I'll pop that one down. <clears throat> Another thing I really loved taking with me was some stickers. These work really well, particularly in the early years, but you will find students will work really hard for a sticker right up to grade six as well. So this beautiful sticker book is one of our Teach Starter ones, but you can just grab some stickers and pop them in that bag and make sure you have your supply topped up at all times. Another thing I loved putting into the teaching bag when I was doing relief teaching was some little badges. Now these ones are available as templates on the Teach Starter website. And and I just um, was at a school one day and they had a badge maker. So I said, if I could borrow that, I would love to take it home on a weekend and um, make these ones up using my own materials. And this one's my favorite, it's happy birthday because sometimes if you turn up and you have a birthday student that day and their normal teacher's not there, they might not be there able to give them their class reward or whatever they would usually do with their class. So it's nice to let them wear a special badge for the day and celebrate with them that way. Another thing I love doing is giving awards. So at the end of the day, I would probably give two to three um, awesome awards from our Teach Starter website as well. And the, these are just a sample from a beautiful collection of awards and use some of those stickers and stamps to really make some standout students feel special. So thanks for your time. I wish you all the best for your future as a casual relief teacher. And I hope that you have an amazing time ahead of you. And thanks for joining me. All the very best. Bye. I just wanted to reiterate a couple of points from earlier on. Um, don't forget that if you're interested in any of the resources discussed in tonight's webinar, you can visit our plans page, which is at teachstarter.com forward slash plans. Um, and if you'd like to hear more about uh, casual relief teaching on our podcast, there's going to be some links posted in the chat now. So that actually brings us to the end of this afternoon's event. So I wanted to thank Minami again. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> That was awesome. And um, thank you guests for joining us. And thank you to Tech Support Crew for helping out with those questions as well. Um, and we will see you next time. Thank you.